Okay. Hey, welcome everybody. Are you with me here, Graham? I am. Yes. All right. Graham's in the house. Okay. So trust me, Graham, this is always an adventure. It is a saga for me when I, when I do this. So it's hit and miss. So, <laughs> so Perfect. I don't know what I do, do technically. So, so I'm welcome. Technically, so we're good. <laughs> okay. Well, hey everybody. I'm, I'm I'm glad you're with us here today. Uh, again, a, a couple of uh, a couple of uh, house clean, cleaning items. Uh, remember, uh, we live by the feedback, and I know that uh, actual live viewing is not always the highest rated at, at this time of day over here on the on the right side of the of the globe. And uh, Graham is over on the left side of the globe. So if you're watching in uh, um, on the playback, please, 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 please leave your comments and such. Everything will get forwarded to to uh, to Graham. And uh, having said that, uh, we can go from here. If there are any issues, uh, technically, gang, I think you can start pointing your finger at me. So I hope we're going to fly through this one here pretty well today. Okay, so. Uh, with all of that, we get that out of the way. Uh, I want to, uh, number one, I, I, I want to introduce you to Graham Lehman from Lehman's Baseball. And Graham's been kind enough to to give uh, some of his time here with us today. And he's extremely busy. I know he's prepping for a trip uh, coming up uh, uh, just a little bit later this week. And he's taking time away from his family. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is just introduce you to Graham. I want to get into this. But the first question I have is, how does a boy from Kelowna get involved with this baseball thing? And to also let you know, Graham, I did not get drafted again this past weekend. So, <laughs> yeah, I had my phone on me too. I didn't get drafted either, and that makes uh, <laughs> at least fifteen years of uh, no phone calls for me. Um, yeah, I mean, I've uh, I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta, which is in which is in Canada. I've sort of uh, I kind of grew up in the wrong country in terms of my, my sport of choice. I grew up in a very obviously hockey dominant, cold area type thing. I mean, I grew up in Edmonton during Wayne Gretzky's heyday, but I still yeah. picked baseball. I was I, I just liked it. Uh, part of the reason I liked it was because I was like I, I probably will get into it, but I mean, uh, it's probably because I was I was good at it. I had the the long lanky arms, the flexibility, and just natural ability to throw. And anytime you you put in a young a young athlete into a sport and they you start praising them you start to like it. So I, I kind of have this theory yeah. that the sport picks the athlete for, versus the, the other way around. Um, from there, I was lucky enough to get a, a, a scholarship to go uh, play baseball in the States. I went down to in, into the state of North Dakota, so I didn't make it very far south of the border. But uh, I played at Jamestown University, which is an NAI school, yeah. uh, pretty good NAI school. They've been to the World Series a couple times. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I from there, I, I, I kind of got like a – I went into the kind of the athletic therapy program there and I was always more interested in, in making athletes bigger, faster, stronger, but there wasn't a kinesiology or exercise science program there. So I sort of picked that, but then halfway through that I was sick and tired of taping ankles and I ended up getting a business degree. Uh, so played my four years there and then I ended up moving out to about as far on the uh, right side of the globe, as Bill was mentioning, as, as possible within North America to the province of, of Newfoundland, which is as far east as you can possibly get. And from there, I was lucky enough to kind of get into the into the kind of the fitness industry for more of like a, I was like a general manager of a gym, but then I kind of really fell back in love with the whole exercise science kind of thing. And uh, from there, I I went up to the the local university, took a couple classes, and I was lucky enough to get into, the, into a master's program since I already had an undergraduate program and I was already a, a personal trainer at that point. Um, and my supervisor, Dr. David Bam was, uh, nice enough to sort of let me pick, I guess, what I wanted to do as my thesis. And that, at, at around that time, I was really starting to read a lot of, uh, uh, stuff on exercise science, not as much baseball, but, uh, I, I came across Eric Cressy in some of his writings. And then that kind of really got me back involved in like, Hey, I, I like exercise science and I like baseball. Let's see if I can, uh, put these two things together. And from there I started my thesis, uh, during this time, my wife and I moved as far as you could possibly get from uh, the right side of the globe to the left side of the globe, all the way to Vancouver, British Columbia, which is, uh, again, big metropolis city just north of Seattle. Uh, best baseball climate as far as Canada goes. Uh, some big, some, what, any any big names that have really come out of Canada have sort of came out from that sort of area, like James Paxton right now for the uh, for the, for the the Mariners is, is from that area. So it was a, more of a baseball dominant sort of area. 
and I was lucky enough to kind of get into coaching some athletic, some, some baseball. And then I was still doing my day job as a strength and conditioning coach. And then from there, I just kind of really parlayed the two in together. But, uh, the, the start of the, the blog, I guess, was during when I was writing my thesis was I was just reading all these papers and, uh, there's some good nuggets of information that I knew a lot of people wouldn't get, uh, I mean, your normal baseball coach or 16 year old isn't reading peer reviewed literature on, on anything. So I would, I just started the the website and with my last name being layman, I just kind of parlayed that into putting stuff into layman's terms and I would read the research and I would digest it and try to teach it to other people. It was, it was more of a selfish thing. I knew that if I could learn something and teach it to someone else, I would, I would have a much stronger understanding of it. And uh, even after I finished my thesis, I just kind of kept going with reading other research papers and then kind of started to come up with some of my own ideas, which is kind of where we are today. But yeah, so currently I live in Kelowna, which is about four hours east of uh, east of Vancouver, straight north of Spokane, by probably about six hours, if you don't know yeah. any yeah. geography. So well, yeah, I, and then, I, I, and it's, it's good. Yeah, I, I think the... Uh... I don't know. I don't think it was his hometown, but I think Robbie Brown, downtown Robbie Brown, Mario Lemieux's right winger played at Kelowna at some point along the line. So, right. <laughs> so anyhow, Hey, so when you say uh, you got back involved with, um, uh, with the game, uh, that's an understatement to, to say the least. So, you know, for, for, those of you who are watching and, and, and if you are follower of, of Graham's work, you know what we're talking about. And, and with Graham uh, here with us, it's, it's just, we need a 30,000 foot view when we're talking about this idea of customized mechanics and, you know, the buzzword in the baseball world, actually probably within the whole, the whole uh, fitness world is this idea of individualized and yet individualized isn't truly individualized. So at this point in your research, I, I believe there are nine points that have come through so far, and you have a little bit more work to do, but I oh, just yeah. wanted to get a hold of you because I don't think you're going to be uh, available for, for a whole lot <laughs> in, in the near future because I, I just think that what you've got going here is is tremendous. So. Tell us, you. you know, give us that idea of what, what is going on at the 30,000 foot mark here of, of customized mechanics. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it, it is difficult. And I mean, uh, you're, you're right about the whole fitness individualization and stuff. Like that. And that's a lot of stuff where I, 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 I draw from as being, again, my day job as a strength and conditioning coach. So again, take an athlete, no matter who they are. I mean, you just have to be able to customize things for them. Um, your tall, skinny guy, I have a, soft spot for the tall skinny guys because I myself am one like they're not going to be able to do um, the same type of program as a, as a short stocky guy who who can lift a ton of weights and stuff like that so like there's always can be this idea of uh, yeah what's what's best for for the individual and in order to get that you have to go through some assessments and and, and test people to see where their strengths and weaknesses are um, and, and then from from a pitching perspective again I'll I really, I really kind of look at the athlete first in, in terms of like, okay, let's get this athlete stronger, more athletic. Uh, and then again, how do we make them better? And that's going to be again, through sort of these assessments. So with, in regards to pitching specifically, I mean, I just, again, I'm, I live up in Canada. So I, I watch uh, the Blue Jays are kind of the team that I get to see the most of. And uh, the idea sort of struck me one time when I was watching uh, Aaron Sanchez and one day and then Marcus Stroman the next day. And then you get other guys that are, that right. that are sort of in between because if you look at Sanchez and Stroman, they're the kind of guys I look I used as my primary examples that are just on either end of the spectrum in terms of their physical sort of makeup. Yet at the same time, they have the same end goal of wanting to be able to throw ninety five miles an hour. So because they can both throw around the same velocity, roughly, um, again, how they go about it is just completely different. I mean, Sanchez is the tallest, lankiest guy you've ever seen, and Stroman is the shortest, stockiest guy you've ever seen. So that kind of got me looking at okay, so how do these guys go about this? And then that brought into the idea of sort of setting up a, a profile of, of being able to see what an athlete can and, and cannot do. And uh, the analogy I always kind of use is, uh, is kind of looking at uh, if you ever play video games with uh, like a race car type of video game is you, you kind of scroll through what kind of video, what kind of car you wanted to have. 
uh, there's always kind of this like bar graph beside the card to show you kind of, okay, this one's really good on the straightaways. This one's good on the corners. This one's light. This one's heavy. And based off of that, like if, if you try to drive a car that's really heavy and good on the straightaways, the same way that you would a car that's sort of more nimble and, and good on the corners, you're not going to have the same sort of results. So that kind of got me trying to think about this because obviously not only in the weight room, should we be customizing things based off of, of what they should be doing? I wouldn't give Sanchez the same program as Stroman. But, uh, but also if we're, if we're their pitching coach, we shouldn't have the exact same sort of pitching cues. Yes. There's a lot of things that every athlete should do. I mean, every pitcher should do. There's, there's certain commonalities across the board that are important. How you get from point A to point B might be a little bit different. And, uh, and there's just always this kind of cookie cutter mentality. If you look at what good mechanics are, it's going to be different for your tall guy versus your short guy and, and everywhere in between. Yeah, uh, if I can uh, step right, step in at that point here, Graham. So you're talking about, you know, you've hit on a, a couple of points here coming through, and, and, and you've talked about intent, you've talked about cueing. Those are uh, part of the work that you've done that that we've integrated here. Uh, but I want to go back to that idea of uh, Stroman and and company. Uh, so when you're looking at this, you do this unique, and I wouldn't necessarily call it unique, but you've really integrated it, and that's that the, the anthropometric uh, measurements, uh, that idea of you know being customized or or whatever word you you want to use. Um, do you have benchmarks based off of that? So I mean that's only one aspect when you're talking about limb lengths and such, and and. Can you, you know, just go down that road a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, again, the, the anthropometrics, uh, most people start and stop with height and weight, which is, which is very little of the anthropometrics. But the, going back to this kind of car analogy, the anthropometrics are really kind of like the frame of the car. It's something we cannot change. So I, I really liked this, this kind of concept of the, we really have to base everything around what that athlete like what their frame is essentially because that's i mean we can change pitching cues we can change how strong and how flexible they are but we're not going to be able to change how long their arms are or anything kind of along this way um the benchmarks are, are going to be a little bit more difficult uh again a lot of the stuff i'm just like it's when, when i'm writing this stuff it's 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 somewhat theory based like it's kind of putting it into in into into action but i mean i, I don't have a lot of hard evidence of like uh this is going to help you. But I mean, um, the stuff that I do read again on, on other research programs of, or other research papers, I've read some stuff in, in regards to water polo where they discovered that, uh, uh, all in the length. So the length of your forearm is indicative or it can be a predictor of, of, of throwing velocity. Um, but again, if we have a guy that's, uh, uh, maybe a short torso, versus a longer torso. If you have a really long torso, maybe you can get more hip shoulder separation versus a guy who's got a, a short, a shorter torso. It's not to say they're not going to get separation, but the, the amount of separation they're going to get is going to be less, but they can still get that power from, from having maybe less range of motion, but a quicker, a quicker, uh, a quicker sort of release, I guess, from, from when the hips op open to when the shoulders open. Uh, whereas a longer guy can maybe, have he can really sort of exaggerate that portion of, of, of his mechanics um i think there's other components like i said i'm, I'm not uh again I'm, I'm just kind of a lot right. of stuff that i'm reading, reading and writing is basically almost me thinking out loud about uh how this kind of goes but i mean a lot of people talk about like hand size in terms of like a pedro martinez had ridiculously big hands for his size these type of things i think are are stuff that we need to kind of look into um and kind of play around with, but, uh, I mean, I'm starting to come up with some more sort of ideas with, with it, I guess, but I, I almost have to circle back because I think that the anthropometrics, anthropometrics, sorry, was like the first article in this series that I wrote and right. which was again, almost over two years ago now. So I, I almost have to circle back to that one to have some, some, some more ideas to it. But I think some, in my opinion, some, some predictors of, of throwing velocity that we might need to look into are some, again, that, that torso uh, length, as well as on the on the length, and even even like even even arm span, I think, uh, or that one's actually been shown as well to be to be again a it's a predictor of throwing velocity. So again, going back to the sport picks the athlete. If you have some ridiculously long arms, 
um, throwing a baseball might be a good sport for you versus if, if you want to become a, a power lifter, then that's going to be playing against you. So again, that's kind of the, the sport picks the, picks the athlete, like I mentioned before. Um, so yeah, as we're looking at, at limb measurements, can you, uh, if there is such a thing that we can do here at this, at this, at this level, can you describe what's going on in some of the other aspects that you've looked at? So, uh, you know, there, there's, there's maximum strength, there's the strength speed, there's the speed strength, there's some of those other categories without getting too far into the weeds there. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the, like I mentioned, because the anthropometrics really sort of set the stage for the other stuff. Uh, even if you were, even if we were to have a, a really good standard of like, Hey, I want every single pitcher to be this strong. Let's say we want them to be able to squat, uh, 200 pounds, 300 pounds, whatever it may be. That number is going to change based off of that and the anthropometrics of that athlete. Again, I'm not going to expect Aaron Sanchez with his tall lanky limbs to be able to squat as much as, as Marcus Stroman, just cause again, he's not biomechanically, uh, set up to to do that so almost within this profile it needs to shift a little bit of like what our standards are for again your your tall lanky guy uh again his strength standards of what we're trying to shoot for are going to be a bit different than than the so, short your guy yeah so at that point graham um and i know this is i mean this is pretty early the, what you are describing what you are talking about i don't see being done anyplace else so when we're talking about standards or benchmarks are you accruing those and will there i mean is there a place for someone like me when i'm looking at some of my young men to say ah here's where we should be based on so and so and whatever yeah no, i mean I, that's i'm trying to work towards that and we're i'm gathering information as we go along but the difficult part again is like not only are we dealing with uh, different amounts of body measurements, but then we're also dealing with different age groups as well. So, I mean, what's the standard for a 13 year old is going to be different than a, than a 16 year old and, and so on and so forth. But, uh, I think, uh, there's going to be some, some general things that I, that I like to look for that are, that are fairly safe and, and across the board that, that we can kind of go for that, uh, that I, that I think hey, all these sort of tests and assessments essentially just kind of should help you as a coach kind of dial in a bit better in terms of, Hey, this is where we need to spend more of our time and energy because this is an area that you're not very good in versus spending the time and energy in an area that you you already ex excel in. Um, so within any of the stuff I, I've mentioned with in terms of speed strength, uh, max strength, or uh, all these different things, I, I kind of I'm trying to find what's this sort of acceptable range on the low end and the high end because I think even if you have an athlete who's really strong in the gym, obviously they're going to love lifting weights but you're going to get to a point where you're getting these diminishing returns where if you take your squat from 300 pounds to 400 pounds, maybe your velocity goes up with it. But when you go from 400 to 450, I bet you your velocity gains are going to be minimal. And so you've spent a lot of time and energy, maybe even set yourself up for an injury, uh, chasing, right. chasing the wrong, chasing the wrong thing. So what are you fighting then, uh, in, in popular, uh, popular, theory or instruction today when, uh, you know, I, I know I have, I have pitchers who this, you know, despite what we want to discuss or talk about, because Max Scherzer can deadlift 525, I'm going to deadlift 525. So, so are, is there, uh, is there a wall right now that we're kicking through? Because I, my, my thinking is with what you're talking about, I think you could just like blow the wall away and I, you know, it's, but baseball is a goofy game. So, and, is, and yeah. no, I mean, it's just extremely complicated because there's a lot of different things going on. Cause I mean, if, uh, if Max Scherzer can deadlift that much, that's just one, one component of, of, of what would make up his profile. So he's got lots of max strength, but what are the other components that, that, uh, that make him good. Maybe he's extremely flexible in certain areas and, and whatnot. So a lot of kind of what I, uh, this sort of concepts that I'm kind of coming up with, uh, I mean, I, I steal from other areas, like in the strength conditioning world, I like the track and field world, uh, but the golf world in particular has been sort of helpful. There's the TPI, the Titleist Performance Institute is kind of, they tried to almost right. reverse engineer the, the golfer by looking at um, basically like a series of, of tests to, to sort of make up, 
to predict good golfers essentially. But I, I think to answer your question, the, the toughest part is going to be that there's no kind of like a one or two tests that are going to sort of make the make or break a, an athlete in terms of like, yes, if you do well on this test, it means you're going to throw hard. It's just going to be a series of things that sort of make up what an athlete might be able to do in terms of, of their athletic ability on the mound. Um, Cause again, I mean, I even did a whole thesis on what field tests best predict throwing velocity and that's where the lateral jump sort of came in. So, I mean, that's, that's an important one, but it's only one piece of the puzzle. So I think it's, again, uh, a combination of tests that might be able to show again, is this, is this pitcher a good enough athlete? And then if, if they are a good, a good enough athlete, if they score well on this stuff, but they don't still throw hard enough, then we need to kind of look more of at the, at the pitching mechanics sort of side of things. But if you give me a guy who's not scoring very well on the, on the, on the athletic tests, then that's, then he needs to spend more time building up the body that can throw hard. Maybe he's already got good mechanics, but he just doesn't have the the horsepower to sort of, to. Yeah. Uh, to get it going, so. Right. I was looking at some of the, um, some of the, the, the information that, that you put out with your work with uh, central Florida college. Yes. So, um, and, and obviously a particular age range, 18 to 20, 21, 22 year olds. Um, my group is typically maybe just a little bit younger um, than that, all the way, all the way down to, to uh, an age where I don't even want to talk about how to throw a ball rather than just pure intent. Yeah. But so give me, how would you go about working first time 16 year old kid that would, that walks uh, into your facility and he says, you know, Graham, make me something. Yes. I mean, what should I, what should I be doing as a coach? Yeah. So obviously, I mean, they're, they're obviously a baseball player. They've, they've been throwing uh, the better part of their life or hopefully. Uh, But yeah, I mean, so you you already know that they already have some of this stuff in terms of the the baseball side of things kind of figured out, or we can try to go after that a bit later. But yeah, I, I really like to start with like, again, assessing basically like basic movement before I get into the complicated pitching mechanics. So, I mean, I'm a fan of uh, sort of the functional movement screen type of type of idea of, of making sure this, this athlete is uh, they're not going to hurt themselves. Cause again, as a strength coach, again, my secondary goal is to make them as big and fast and strong as possible. My primary goal is to sort of keep them, keep them healthy. So looking at some basic assessments, we'll say like an overhead uh, squat, some lunge patterns. Can they do a push up? Um, I would also look at certain ranges of motion as well. Uh, I mean, your classic, uh, shoulder, external, internal rotation, some hip, internal, external rotation, just to kind of get an idea of, of what they can and cannot do just from a, from a sort of very foundational level. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the FMS, but they kind of have this sort of pyramid of kind of what they look at, but like the base layer is just functional movement. Can they, can they move well? And then the second pyramid is kind of just general athletic ability. Are they strong? Are they fast? And then the top of the pyramid is that athlete, is their athletic or their sport specific skill, whether they're hockey, golf, baseball. Um, and a lot of guys, maybe they have a ton of skill at the, at the top level, but they're everything, and, but everything is built off of like a, is built on top of a foundy uh, off of a, sorry, a faulty foundation because they don't, they don't move well. So, I mean, I think the game has has gotten a lot better because of the people like Eric Cressy that have sort of really shown people like we need to make sure that's again these guys move well. If we're going to be asking them, if we're going to be asking them to to do this violent action of throwing a baseball, we need to ensure that they can do these sort of basic things. Do they have enough core strength? Do they have enough flexibility? And then do they have some base levels of of strength? So, um, following some basic movement screen type stuff, then I would. Um, assess them and kind of in those general sort of areas like we talked about in terms of like, are they explosive enough? So I would, I would pick maybe like a lateral jump and a standing long jump as some, some basic uh, parameters. And then, uh, then as well, I going from there. So that would be kind of more of our, our speed strength type of ideas. And then when we're looking at more like, are they, are they strong? Um, it would depend on that athlete's uh, history. Have do they have, are they proficient in the weight room? Do they know how to do a squat or or certain like a rear foot elevated split squat? I'm not going to test an athlete on the first day if they've never been inside of a weight room um, in terms of like their their actual strength. But down the road, I would I would after a couple months, I would see like okay, how many 
how many rear foot LA split squats can I do? That's just my favorite uh, particular um, lower body exercise for pitchers. And even in terms of testing, because of the fact that you're only on one leg and you're not going to be hurting yourself by trying to grab too much weight. Um, as well as maybe I forget what I did on, on the strength one uh, in particular, the max strength uh, article, but I think I, I looked also at like a, a one arm floor press. So, I mean, I, I'm always trying to pick exercises where an athlete can't hurt themselves, but the one RM, the, the one rep max testing, it's, it's kind of gone by the, the wayside, especially for baseball, because they just know that it's, it's not really going to predict throwing velocity that well, but it is, it does serve as the foundation, like max strength serves as a foundation for all the other types of strength in terms of like the speed and the speed strength and all those kind of other ones. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I guess that was uh, maybe more along the speed strength was um, the uh, reverse med ball throw. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. There was a recent one yeah, that I did with, yeah. with those guys where I had them do a, like a bunch of series of tests and I'm going to release one here, another article in, in a little bit where I looked at more like their speed type stuff where like I had them like how far can you throw, uh, how far can you long toss? Um, how, how, hard can you do like a like a, a run and gun throw with a five ounce baseball to kind of again just fill in those those different parts of the of the what we call the force velocity spectrum to sort of see where an athlete is is good but um yeah i mean i, I the reverse med ball throw i mean I, I really like it in terms of it's it's a uh, it's simple enough you can learn it so uh, if you don't know what we're talking about you just take a six pound medicine ball and you just heave it backwards as, as far as possible and you measure that um Athletes tend to like it because you get a you get a, a measurable right away with it to sort of see where they are, and they can sort of compete with one another to see who can throw it the furthest. Um, it's easy on the body; you're not gonna you're not gonna get hurt with it. Uh, but then I think it's the, the big part about it is that it's a it sort of fills the gap between uh, how strong they are and how hard they throw a baseball, and the, the med ball throw kind of sits in the middle, so you can sort of see how how, how they're doing there. Yeah, really, really key point right there. Um, hey, folks, uh, just as we're going here, uh, on the screen, I have uh, Graham's uh, site, his website at, at lehmansbaseball.wordpress.com. Everything that we're talking about right now, Graham has been kind enough. Uh, he has shared all of us with all of us, and it's there on, uh, on his blog. Uh, the drills are are there as well, so you know please take take advantage of what he has done out of the kindness of his soul and in the interest of uh, pushing the game forward. So I'll, I'll leave that here on the on the screen here uh, for for a little bit here as as we move forward. I, I know from our from my perspective, Graham, I, I know that uh, we've real you know a lot of the things that that you've talked about we've integrated. And we've had success with it. And when we're looking at 155-pound kids that are turning over the middle um, at, at 89, 90, 91 mile an hour, I'm very excited for that. Because, you know, everybody wants to look at a radar gun nowadays and say, hey, 100, 95, whatever. But a 150-pound kid turning over at 89, 90, 91, Impressive. that is an unbelievable amount of velocity. And uh, yeah, so I mean, what you have done is uh, has has really brought it home, and and it's more so than you know one cue for everybody, and and I, I think that is uh, a part of the lesson that you're teaching us all here, and uh, so so from that perspective, uh, greatly, uh, truly appreciated. So. Um, we're getting down to that time, Graham. Uh, we're a little bit uh, closing in on that 30-minute mark. So, uh, you know, at some point here, I'm going to put you on the spot because I'm going to say, man, we've got so much to cover. I, would, I need to bring you back for us. But um, uh, what are we looking at in the future? What are you working on at this point? I, I mean, it's unbelievable, the you know, what you've done to this point. So now where is your – Where's your uh, research taking you right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is kind of research. I mean, I'm not actually publishing any peer-reviewed right. research or anything. I did that. I did that once, and it's basically I'm just kind of in in my garage, kind of reading stuff and coming up with sort of ideas and concepts that, and seeing kind of uh, seeing kind of what sticks. And, and the good part about it is I can just write it on this on this website that I've created, and it's still it's a WordPress website. I'm not really 
in it for the the marketing kind of purposes and stuff like that. I hope to get more right. into more involved in into baseball. But um, I, I'm, I've been lucky enough where I have had uh, a couple sort of case studies, I guess. Like again, with that College of Central Florida, they had uh, Nate Pearson there who touched 102 on a radar gun, and I have all this information on on him and how strong he is, how far he can throw a med ball, how far he can long toss. So that's kind of gives me an idea of kind of what 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 he can do as, as an athlete so he throws really hard but he's also like a he's like a, he's like six five 250 pounds so it kind of gives me a good idea of like what that kind of particular athlete is because it is really it really gets down to being really hard to customize things for every single individual if you look at like a major league organization there's whatever 200 300 plus players in, in that organization and it gets really tough on the strength and conditioning coach or the pitching coach to try to come up with something individualized for each guy so I think what I'm really trying to work towards is kind of coming up with uh, essentially maybe buckets of, of guys where we've got kind of our, our Strowman, our Sanchez, and short, stocky, tall, skinny, and then a couple other guys, a couple other sort of uh, body types in between. And then trying to look at uh, what uh, if, if you kind of fall into, into that one of those particular categories, like what are the numbers you should be, you should be shooting for? Uh, in the past, I've, I've published some stuff where I found some research online where uh, over the course of like a four year period, there was a Texas Rangers organization did a research study where they 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 put out everything in terms of like their preseason testing to see okay, uh, how how fast guys could run a 10 yard dash, uh, their grip strength, their vertical jump and some of the other preseason tests. So it kind of gives you these standards to sort of shoot for because I find a lot of times athletes when they're in the gym they know what they want to shoot for in terms of velocity on the mound, but they don't really know what to be aiming for in, in the weight room. They don't know like, okay, how strong do I need to be? They're sort of always chasing this. They know they need to get stronger, but they're chasing this sort of number that they don't really, they don't really know what they're, they're, they're going for. So trying to come up with some of these sort of standards. And uh, I guess one of the more popular things I ever wrote uh, is kind of this baseball combine where I, I love watching the NFL combine because I'm just a fan of athleticism in general, but, we kind of know if you're an NFL player, what you're looking for in terms of your pro agility, your 40 yard dash, your long jump and stuff like that. But that stuff doesn't really exist for baseball. So trying to, again, the, the first step is trying to find these tests that do predict velocity to a certain extent, and then trying to kind of come up with this, I guess this sort of recipe of a uh, combination of tests to, to suit for each body type, because this, uh, this idea that really what it comes down to is if we look at Stroman and Sanchez, again, they, they throw roughly the same speed, but their recipe of how they kind of go about it is going to be a bit different. So if I have a tall, lanky guy, again, I know I need to get him strong, but I know I don't have to chase huge numbers. But I do know that he has to be really fast so that he has to maybe spend more time working on those type of plyometric drills or, or something like that versus a short, stocky guy who's going to need to, again, be strong, but also be really strong to make up for the fact that he doesn't have that limb length to be able to produce that same type of velocity. So I, again, it's, it's an extremely complicated sort of a uh, uh, manner. And again, I'm trying to just kind of weed my way through it. And, and hopefully I can, I can, I can start helping some people out by sort of coming up with some more concrete ideas of, of do this, don't do that type of type of idea. Cause obviously everyone wants a, a preset sort of recipe of, of all yeah, of this so, along. Yeah, so you're 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 going to upset the apple cart. Is, is <laughs> basically what's going on because you know if I'm hearing this, I think what you're saying is uh, you don't have to be six foot two, six foot three, six foot four anymore. Uh, we're going to let the small guy back in the game. Hey, I mean, it, it happens. I mean, actually, uh, again, like I mentioned, there's sort of a range. Like uh, there's a reason why there's not a ton of guys that are six, six plus. I mean, if, if, if we think that having longer limbs is going to be better then why aren't there tons of six foot eight guys. Pitching? Yeah. yeah. You know, you'll see kind of the sweet range is kind of, I mean, I've, I've read some, some research again, where they show like the number of, of pitchers that are in between a certain range. I mean, there's not going to be a lot of guys that are five, nine and below. And there's not a lot of guys that are six, seven and above. There are guys, there are sort of exceptions to the rule, but being the, Taller guys, like I said, I have a soft spot for those guys. Like, if you have longer limbs, it gives you the potential to throw harder. But you just have to get things a lot more aligned. I think Randy Johnson is obviously a great right. example, being six ten, six eleven. But he had to work on his mechanics extremely hard in order to be, in order to have them be, uh, be able to kind of reproduce them day in, day out. Because um, yeah. it's it's just like if you if you went golfing and you had a 
a 55 inch driver sure you could hit the ball further but i mean it's it's going to take some practice and your your margin for error is going to be a lot slimmer because again if you misstep one little thing you're going to lose power rather than rather than gaining it but but you're right you know we're, we're starting to see more sort of like the athletic kind of shorter guys um body weight is always huge for for, for throwing a baseball but it's not the right. it's not the only way so again if we look at that profile of, of where all these guys are um if you if you don't have a lot of body weight then we got to make up for that in, in other areas we got to have lots of strength lots of flexibility maybe and and amazing mechanics in order to make up for the fact that you don't have those those other gifts so yeah again there's just, there's just many many uh many roads lead to rome or however the saying goes where there's just different, <laughs> right. different, different ways to get there and that's just what uh what we need to to appreciate and, and try to figure out with on an individual basis or at least again like i mentioned at least putting guys rather than a one size fits all let's at least kind of put guys into at least five categories and have a plan for for each of that for each category yeah well uh i i, I think with that graham i think with with that um i think we've done a, a good job of staying at thirty thousand feet and what I'd like to do at your convenience when you're, if you would uh, uh, agree to that, I'd love to bring you back and I would love to bring you back on your terms instead of mine. So that if you wanted to get into those weeds uh, or such, I, I would love the opportunity for you to uh, help us out over here on the, on the right side of the, of the, of the globe here again. So, yeah, it'd be um, my pleasure. I mean, every anytime I get the chance to kind of talk this through, I'm, I'm hopefully helping people out, but I'm also sort of making sense of it a bit more in my in my own sense, and and uh, yeah, just trying to trying to figure it out. It's it's a it's a billion dollar question we're trying to answer here. If we can try to get yeah. any, everybody to throw ninety five, it's obviously probably not that feasible. But at least if we kind of take at least a bit more of a customized, individualized approach, uh, we're at least going to help more people achieve these goals yeah. rather than the one size fits all, which is good for the middle, but it's not good for, for the athletes on, on either, on either end yeah. of the spectrum. Right. And, but I just see benefits in healthy young individuals. So yes, for sure. 100%. Yeah. So, uh, with that, um, with that Graham, I, I, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for coming on here and helping, uh, helping us to, to understand this, this whole idea, uh, just to even get, a hint of how complex this whole act of throwing a baseball is. And uh, we certainly appreciate that and uh, safe travels um, you and your family and get back safe. And I'll talk to you here very, very, very soon. Awesome. I appreciate it very much, Bill. Uh, thank you, Graham.